Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. We thank God that we are here today to um, worship Him and to hear His word. So I want to once again welcome you all um, to this service where we are going to hear the word of God. So I want to start by what we talked about last week. Uh, when we were looking into the word of God, where we identified that uh, as we come to God every day on a daily basis, uh, there are certain things which uh, we come to God for and uh, the reasons, in other words, why we come to God. And uh, as we were exploring, we found that uh, um, there are so many reasons why we come to God, but uh, all the reasons we can just put them into different categories where there's a pull factor and a push factor. And what we identified uh, last week was um, most of the time the push factor is, is things which drive us to come to church because number one, maybe you are looking for something, or number two, we are, we are running away from something and we are actually coming to God. And uh, the example of a pull factor is to understand when you understand who God is and you understand what he said in your life, so you come to him. We come to God because uh, he created heaven and earth and everything in it, and we understand the word which says men, uh, uh, men, the human, human beings were created by God so they can worship God. So we understand that our purpose of here, being here on earth is actually to worship God. So we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and our, our strength. That's what the Bible says. So the pull factor is when God is pulling us to him uh, in a way that uh, whatever it is that is happening outside does not have an effect on uh, whether you are going to come to God or not, because already you are bound by the love of God. The Bible says, so what shall separate us away from the love of God? So nothing, absolutely nothing. So there's a, if there's a pull factor, there's nothing which separates you from the love of God. But for example, if uh, you are looking for something and that something happens or you get something you're looking for, sometimes the, if that was the, your, your push factor for you to come to share, sometimes um, y y when you get what you're looking for, sometimes you may not really have that, uh, uh, that bond with God in a way that uh, um, sometimes you, you, you go through a difficult situations but you still come to God. So if you have looking for something, it means that that can be a drive for you to come to God. But um, things may change when you find that thing. Or when you are running away from something, from the devil or whatever, when things settle down, you may want to go back because uh, it, it's just, just a push factor to, for you to come. But uh, when we have established a pull factor in our relationship with God, it means that no matter what, the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Bible says, when God was speaking to the children of Israel, that he said, your, the Lord your God is one. Yeah. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Which means that in a way, if our worship is uh, based on that, it means that God is pulling us to him rather than we being pushed by external factors to come to God. You see, so that's what we established then. And we, what we found also was that sometimes the push, push factors will be more to do with your, uh, your, your selfish gain, if you like, um, because I, I, I'm looking for something or I'm running away from something. So I'm actually go, going to God as a... As a um, it's my refuge. It's not bad, but the issue is when you establish a pull factor, it means that no matter what, whether you've got plenty, whether you don't have, whether um, things are hard, whether things are not hard, but you are pulled to God in a way because um, you understand that you, the word of God says love God with all your heart, with all your soul. So no matter what, you will still come to God. So that's what we're saying that I think it's a, it's a, it's a good exercise to go and establish what exactly is the core of your worship? What exactly drives you? What, what exactly uh, pulls you to come to God? So it's very important. I think, see the thing is, the word of God, when, when you come to church every day, 
or every Sunday or every Saturday, whatever day of the week you worship. There's no one who's going to uh, examine you to write, uh, to say, you know, you have passed or you have not passed. So it's a very, um, it's a very much uh, something to do with, the, with your relationship with God. You know, when people go to, to school, they write an exam and they mark a womb, actually mark. But the issue with worshiping God is all about yourself and your relationship with your God. So it's very important then to be disciplined in that way, that there's no one who's going to, whether the word is going to be preached, whether someone can give me guidance, but actually at the end of the day, it's my relationship with my God. That's why it's very important. Um, so that's why discipline comes uh, into play. That's why it's very, very important then to be disciplined in that way, because you know that there's no one who's examining you, but actually God is your relationship with your God. This is very important. So that was just a recap of, of last week. And... Uh, but today we want to talk about, remember, uh, all our, our preaching is really based on uh, the theme what we were talking about from the beginning of the year, where God, uh, where Joshua spoke to the children of Israel, and he was explaining to them that uh, it may not be possible to worship this God because they were actually um, having some idols, even if God, or even when God was actually taking them from uh, the challenges where they were facing all the time and he was providing and he was creating a way where there was no way. But what he established was that they were still worshipping other idols. So the Bible teaches us that he said to the children of Israel, you need to, um, you need to make sure that you uh, throw away these other gods and you pledge your loyalty towards God. And uh, so what we're establishing is to find out, so how can we, a Christian, or as a Christian, how can we actually worship God in the way God wants? Because here Joshua actually said, you may not be able to worship this God. And he had established that they, they were actually having other gods, even if God, the almighty God, was looking after them and providing them and, and, and all, all those things. So really today, um, as part of uh, the, this, uh, um, this, this series, we are just uh, um, talking about the Word of God. We are, we are going to establish um, something very important. Um, now, when the fear of God departs from a person, then the rest becomes not important because the devil already knows that he has taken away something, the core value of your worshipping of your God. So we are going to read the Bible, and today I want to talk about um, what then happens when the fear of God departs. Um, and this can happen in a very subtle way, and this can happen in a way which you, you know, may not understand. Um, but uh, when that happens, things become a bit difficult, because then we, as you're going to hear in the, in, in the scriptures, we, we start to encounter certain things which we will start to normalize because the fear of God is no longer with us. Now, so the person who can then worship God in the way Joshua was expecting was a person then who feared God as well because fearing God is very important because um, I gave you an example before that if you are going to, to work, um, you don't have to be uh, reminded every day that you have to be here at uh, 7.30 because already you know. Um, th there's nothing, no one is going um, is, is to tell you anything about coming to work on time because you know already that's the contract you signed, so you come at 7.30. Stop coming to, to work at 7.30, come in your own time, you start facing the consequences. That's basically what happens. So, um, in the same way, when we, um, we understand who God is, when we fear God, when we understand his authority, when we understand the authority of the word of God, it means that we don't need to be told by anyone. Okay, we need to be told anyway as, we, as people always preach the word of God. As we, we are always uh, counseled by the word of God and we are, all, we are always advised or whatever it is we, we support we get. But at the end of the day, 
when we understand the authority of the word of God, it means that um, if, even the word, the word of God, the Bible, is, 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 you have not even opened the Bible. Already <laughs> you know what is written in the Bible and you already know what God wants. So you, you let the word of God have authority over you. You let the word of God uh, have power over you. Now, here's the problem now when that does not happen. When that does not happen, we start to use our own mind, we start to use our own understanding, we start to use our own rationale, we start to use our own thinking, we start to use our own um, you, you know, reasoning, all those kind of things we start to use. Uh, we, we now move away from what actually God says. So that's where the problem is. So today we are going to read the Bible um, and uh, let's, let's read from the book of Genesis. We know the, the scripture, and I'm going to uh, probably open another scripture as well. But let us read uh, um, the Bible from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 3. Now I need to read uh, chapter 3, verse 1. And Verse 1, and I want you to read, and I will tell you where to stop. Human disobedience. Mm -hmm. now, the, now the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord God had made. The snake asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, the woman answered except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. The snake replied, that's not true. You will not die. God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its fruit would be to eat. And she thought how wonderful it would be to become wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband and he also ate it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given understanding and realized that they were naked. So they sawed fig trees together and covered themselves. That evening, they heard the Lord God walking in the garden, and they hid from him among the trees. But the Lord God called out to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat the fruit that I told you not to eat? The man answered, the woman you put here with me gave me the fruit and I ate it. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, that's all. Thank you very much. Um, so, so here the story of the um, Garden of Eden and uh, the disobedience of um, um, Adam and if we all know, uh, it's not a strange, it's not a new, and it's not uh, something which we don't know. It's something which we know, but there's some things which I just want to unpick from uh, from this story. Um, now, what we need to understand is that already God has spoken to the people, uh, Adam and, uh, uh, and Eve, in, in fact, he had spoken to Adam. So they knew very well that uh, God had already spoken, and they actually knew that uh, what they were supposed to do, what they were not supposed to do. They knew very well, you see. Um, and at that point, they feared God because they understood God was the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it. And actually, God had actually done um, 
you know, the, the creation prior to that, and also it created men and also the woman. So they knew very well. So they knew very well how important it was to understand and to know um, God in that respect, that he is the one who actually made them, um, who, created, actually, who actually created them. But what I want to talk about today is um, when that fear departs, now, you see, the thing is, the Bible, the Bible actually says here, uh, now the serpent, in this trans translation says, uh, now the serpent was more, uh, was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath God said, Ye shall not eat uh, of every tree of the garden, so, so in other words, what, he, what, what actually happened was that he, the, the, the Bible says that he, um, the, the serpent was, um, I will say, was a most deceiving creature among whatever it is God had actually created. But in the, in, in the way the, um, the serpent approached the woman, he didn't approach in a way which was straightforward, and, the, and then the woman will actually see that, you know, this is what, what is actually is happening. But the way it happened was that the serpent started to ask about what God had actually said to the woman, or to the, to, yeah, to, to the woman. And uh, um, which is very important because when God says something, sometimes there are certain times where some thoughts and some doubts will start to come unto you. And uh, you start to scrutinize whether actually did God actually say this? Uh, and you start to want to find out why and, and what, are, what will be the consequences anyway if I do it or if I don't do it, whatever it is. Now, at that point, what is at risk is your ability to fear God. Because the moment you entertain uh, whatever it is which is contrary to what God has, uh, has actually said, you are now entertaining a very big risk in your life, which is exactly what this woman did. She started to entertain because the, 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 the serpent is asking, did actually God say this? Uh, in a way that this woman probably started to doubt what actually God said. But my point I want you to understand is that um, when the fear of God departs from a man, or a woman in this respect. What then happens? Now, if this woman had actually said that, I do fear God, and this is exactly what God said, no matter what you are going to say, but I'm going to stick to what God said, the story would have been totally different. But the fact that he, she entertained and... Um, even yourself probably started to doubt what God said. Because if she had actually believed in the word which God had actually said, because the Bible said, so the, the, the day you are going to eat, the day, this is the day you are going to surely going to die. If she had feared God in that respect to understand that, you know, if I go, I'm going to eat this fruit, this is the time and this is the end of me, she would have not done that. She would have stuck to what God was actually saying. So that's exactly how the devil enters into us as human beings. The devil enters with a story. The devil enters with an entertainment. The devil enters with a, with a way which you will not find that is actually the, the devil. You see, um, but that, that only happens when you when the fear of God, because that's exactly what happened here uh, when we start to unpick this scripture. The fear of God departed from Eve in a way. 
And then he, she started to entertain this man, or sorry, this serpent, who was coming with a different version of what God had actually said to them. So my point is that we need to understand that when we stop fearing God, there are certain things we start to entertain. When we entertain those things, we entertain it in a, probably, I don't know whether in a good way, but the result can actually be very detrimental. Now, and I want you to take note of the fact that the devil, uh, the serpent, was regarded as a, 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 a serpent, a, a, so, so one of the things which God had created but was so deceiving. In fact, let me, uh, uh, this translation actually says, let me go back, it says, Now the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord had made. The snake asked the woman, did, did God really tell you not to eat the fruit from any tree in the garden? So which means, um, the woman knew very well, but she was being asked in a way to start to doubt. So she knew very well what was said, but she was asked in a way so that she would start to doubt. So the devil was actually putting doubt in her. So for her to start to doubt whatever it is God had actually said. And that's how the devil gets into us. But the, here's the thing I, I need you to understand. So when the devil enters, he, he does not want you to leave to, um, he's not finished with you in a way. Because um, when we see the story of uh, Eve, Adam and Eve, what you would then find, it was not only the eating of the fruit, which was against what God was actually saying, but it was actually the consequence, consequences of then what happened later. It's very important. So when, 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 when uh, the fear of God departs from us as Christians, we start to, so the fear was there already in us, but when the fear of God departs from us, it means that um, we are then free to do other things which we feared before because God has actually said something to us. So we start to entertain certain things in our life which those things are actually contrary to what God wants. We now start to, uh, to, um, to entertain those things. Why? It's not automatic because the fear of God has departed. So the fear of God stays with something in our life, for example. So the fear of God, when we fear God, right, we tremble before him and uh, we, we try by all the means, there's no one who's perfect, that's what, that's what the, the word of God says, and that's tr the truth, but we seek to do what is right when we are in the presence of God or when we, when we live our life. But here's the thing, when the fear of God departs away from us, that leaves a, a gap or a, um, something which the devil can feel so that we can now do those things which we used to fear before because we used to fear God. So it's a series of things which will happen when we start to unpick it. Okay, the devil comes in to, the, to, to Eve and started to, uh, to, to question her about what God actually said. In other words, he wants to put some doubt in what God says. So that's exactly what happens. So someone will come in and start to put some doubt in you, in what you believe already. And when you entertain that, you start also to believe. You start to rationalize things and you start to, to wanting to believe that what, which, which someone else is coming. Let me give you an example of the old prophet. Now, the story about the old, old prophet was uh, about uh, a prophet who was sent by God. Someone, a message came to someone and that, that person, uh, God spoke to that person. So he knew very well that God had spoken to me. But the issue is that God had given him the instructions on how to travel where he was going and how to come back where he was actually going. And he was actually given the instructions to say, do not listen to anyone, don't do anything, and then the proper instructions were actually given. But here's what happened. He also met someone else. 
But as he met someone else, that someone else says, I'm also a prophet. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when, when the devil comes, he doesn't come with as a, 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 a strange as something which you don't know. But it comes with something which you want to believe and you want to know, and something probably something which is very, um, something which is very, very, very common. Oh, oh okay. Let, let, let me just say, as for example, if 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 the the serpent was asking, let, let us go back to uh, how she, the the serpent asked, because the serpent asked as if the serpent knew already what God had spoken about. That's where the point is. The serpent was asking as if the serpent already knew. In fact, the serpent already knew. Because here is what the serpent asked. The serpent said, um, So the snake asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat the fruit from any tree in the garden? So it means he already had the prior knowledge about what God had actually said. So he had actually, the, so the devil already knew, the devil already understood that he, this woman knows what God has actually said. But the way he's asking is to say that, to, 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 to induce some doubt in what God has actually said. That's what is important. Now, so when that happened, um, uh, the conversation started. And when it, uh, when, it, when it did start, when it went on, the devil then started to put some doubt in the sense that this will not happen. So remember the old prophet, he saying, I'm also a prophet. The prophet, the actual prophet, he knows what God has spoken about. The prophet is actually, from the beginning, he actually said, I'm not going to take the, eat the fruit. He is actually, sorry, the food. And he's actually saying that God has already told me this. But the old prophet said, I, I'm also a prophet. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this man said, oh, he's also a prophet, so he's fine then. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So he said, if he's a prophet, then he, he, he's fine. So I can listen to what he's actually saying. Now, the issue was that do not go in this road or do not go into the, the, in, in the place, in, in, the, um, in, the, in, in, in a certain route which, 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 which was contrary to what he had actually been informed. And uh, um, so he, he, he went uh, in an opposite way of what God had actually said. And then what we understand is that he was then eaten by a lion. Because whatever God had said, there was a reason why God was actually saying it. Now, so we, we go back to our story. So our story now, what we are talking about here is that, now, so the, the same man is now trying to speak to Eve and uh, uh, is now saying that whatever God said, told you, it's not really true. It's not going to happen the way God has said. And it's actually giving him a different rationale, a, a different way of, of reasoning. And uh, um, Eve gave in. And we know what happened. She ate the fruit. And then we know what happened. The Bible tells us that uh, uh, as soon as they did that, God started calling them because he already knew what had happened. And uh, uh, they would not respond to God. It was now difficult for them. And what, whatever God had actually said was going to happen, it actually happened because if they were now and again able to come in with God as he speak to them, this time around, they were not able to. Why? Because the, the, the word of God always comes with the truth. Mm. See, the, the moment you eat this, you are going to die. So they were not able to stand before God. In other words, their, their, their ability to stand with God died. They were not able to stand before God. And that's what, what, what happened. So what is the importance of this story to understand. The importance of this story is that we need to understand. You see, when God says something, it's very important. And I want you to say, to understand this, um, look at it from this point of view. Now, when Eve, Adam and Eve 
were now out of the garden because eventually they were actually then chased out of the garden. We've talked about this before. Now, the privilege and uh, the way they were living before was now totally different. But the life they were living again became normal in an abnormal way. Why? Because God had created them for something and he had actually had an intention for them. But because they had not feared God, they had not kept what God had actually said, they were now given an alternative life, which was not the original. So I want you to write <laughs> this down for you in your notes. You can live an alternative life, which is apart from what God has actually created you for. So Adam and Eve started to live an alternative life. That was not the life which God had actually created from them for, but because of their lack of fear of God, they started to live an alternative life. But if you're living an alternative life, you still go back to work, you still do everything else, but the only thing is that you are living an alternative life. Which is not original to what God has intended for you. So, now, so here's the thing, now what, what will start to happen? What will start to happen is that, so the language of God starts to become foreign to you. Why? Because you have left the God's ways. So the, the language of God becomes foreign. So when, when, when the language becomes foreign, the communication starts to break. So there is no actual or effective communication between you and your God because your, the language has become foreign. You, you, you're no longer like what God intended you to be. You are now living, it's fine, but you are living in a, in a foreign way. Very important. You're living now in a, in a you know, like if I start to speak uh, uh, Spanish or if one of us speaks Portuguese, if we don't understand Portuguese, we don't know. Or we can understand that they are just speaking, but we don't understand what they are saying. Now, the Bible says, for those who received him, he gave them the right to be called the children of God. Now, here's the thing. Let's have a look, uh, look at that statement. For those who, who, who received him, he gave them the right to be called the children of God. And then the Bible says, children not born of natural means, but children born of God. Now, in other words, it means that they've already come to another level, which is different from the <laughs> level we now understand. Because when the Bible says not of natural means, it means that already the, 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 it's not natural. It's something else. But born of God, it means that see, when God then speak, they will be able to understand. Why? Because they are born of God. But let God speak to us when we are putting on our natural self. Here's things will start to happen. These things are too difficult for us to do. These things are not possible. These things will not be able to do them. These things that there is no way here. And these things are, why? Because we are just trying to communicate with God in a physical, self, physical way, but when he himself wants us to operate in a spiritual way. Th th that's what it is. That's what it is. So when, when we move away, when we move away from what God wants, yes, we still just live a life. It's fine. There's not a problem. But the only problem we just encounter is that we're just living a life which is not in line with what God wants us to be living. Therefore, that's why you then see our focus is different from what God wants us to focus on. That's why you see when God uh, tells us some, to do something, it's difficult for us to do. But, and I've always said it before, that uh, you know when you, when you go to the festivals or, or when you go, you always see uh, people are not listening to what God is saying. But when it's a time of prayer, for, to pray for people who are sick. People are, are, are just there to pray. You understand what I'm saying? So the level you are functioning is totally different from what God is expecting. You have got your own needs to be met. You've got all your, your own things to accomplish. And God has got a totally different agenda. You see, so my point I want to stress unto you is that when the fear of God departs from men, uh, things become normal which are not supposed to be normal because the fear has already departed. So there are certain things I want to encourage you in your life, in your Christian life, to understand. 
safeguard the fear of God in you. Because when you safeguard the fear of God in you, you run to do what God says because God has said it. You do not sleep thinking about how you accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. You have to travel a journey. doesn't matter that you don't have money in your house or food in your household, whatever it is. Why? Because you fear you understand what God is in your life. And you understand the language of God because you are functioning in the level which God wants you to function. Because remember I said, if the fear of God departs from you, you still live a normal life, that's fine. But the only problem is that you're just living a life which, is, which God has not prescribed for you. So the, the fear of God becomes so, so much important in people who worship God. You start to understand the language of God. Because the language of God is different from the language we speak in the sense that, remember when I was talking about how the mind and the, the heart operates. I said, if many, so I said, if, if, if women were always going to listen to the proposal of a man based on the way they think, it means a man will not get married. Why? Because people will start to think about if I get married, when you are rationalizing and you're not using the heart, you start to think about, so how will I survive? How is he going to get, buy me a dress? How is he going to do that? Because you are thinking about your mind, by your mind. But we decide by heart because it doesn't matter, it doesn't have money, but my heart loves him. That's what it is. So we need to understand that even in God as well, those things, those, those things also apply. So as long as our God, uh, we love God with our heart, it's according to what the Bible says, when you love God with our, our heart, it doesn't matter whatever, whatever else. And that will help us also to, to understand certain things and to, to start to walk in the path which God wants us to walk. Now, if ever we are going to use the reasoning of the brain in worshiping God, we are far away from God, in a sense. Why? And I go back to the word, and I want you to understand this very important. Live from the place you are to a place I am going to show you. When you reason out, you say, I'm 75 years old. How can I leave my father's household? And how can I start to go and have a new life? You think about these things. Move from, do not go from the dry ground, but uh, stay in the dry ground. You start to think, how can I do that? doesn't make any sense to any man that his family is trying to look for something to eat and you're telling me not to go where there is harvest. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So it's, it's different. But here's the thing. So when we listen to what God is saying with our hearts, we start to create something because, as you know, in fact, before I go, go there, let me give you another, another example. As the children of God of Israel were actually being pursued by the Egyptians, here's the thing when they actually had moved from the land of captivity. The Bible tells us that behind them was the Egyptian, well, the Egyptian soldiers. Ahead of them was the sea. So when you think about it, when you rationalize, you start to think that with your own mind, I am dead. With your own mind, it's, we are dead. We are not going anywhere. We are just like dead. Be still. And you will see what the Lord will do. The war is not you. The battle is not for you. These Egyptians, which you see now, you won't see them again. In a, nat in a supernatural way, things begin to happen. But when you think about it in a way of thinking, rationalizing, and uh, using the, the way we think, it's impossible. So my, my point is that when we come to a level where we understand and we believe in what God says, 
it doesn't matter, it's too difficult, it doesn't matter when we believe in what God says and we fear him. It means that something will start to happen in our life. And sometimes these things may, may need to, you may need to, you may need to go in a, in a very difficult situation for you to see the power of God. Remember, when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they actually had to be thrown in the furnace of fire for the Son of God to be seen walking with them. I like the attitude was that if God is going to save us, but even if he doesn't save us, but we are not going to worship the idol. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So it's, it, the fear of God did not depart them no matter they were put on a corner or no matter it actually meant death, but the fear of God did not depart from them. If the fear of God had departed from them, it means that they're going to, wash, to worship the idol. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I believe, I, I, I believe they, they, they would have been uh, making, uh, you, you know, uh, rationale to say, ah, but this is, what, what are we going to do anyway? The, <laughs> we had no alternative. We, we had no options. So, you know, we ended up just worshiping this idol. So my point I'm making to, 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 to you is that to understand that when the fear of God is in you, um, it means that no matter whatever it is that, that comes as a, something attractive, something, um, I'll say something which you say it makes more sense to do than doing what God says, as long as the fear of God has not departed from you, you still stick to what God said. You still stick to what God said. So, um, so, so my point I want to um, make is that um, do not let the fear of God depart from you. Because when the fear of God departs from you, you start to entertain certain things which will have a negative impact in your spiritual life and your relationship with your, with your God. Remember, living, you're still believing. That's not a problem. But my point is that you're just believing. You're just believing, but not according to what God wants you to live. That's all it is. Many people think that um, if I do something which God does not want, and uh, um, because I've done something which God does not want, God will just punish me there. God does not work like that sometimes. Sometimes he does, but sometimes he doesn't. Because he said in his word, you think you are like, um, you, you, you think you are like me. Because we, we think that someone, if, if God, someone, some, someone does something wrong, we want God, God to punish. No, no, maybe it doesn't work like that. You see, people just live a life, a normal life. That's not a problem. But the only problem is that they'll just be living a life which is contrary to what God wants them to live. So meaning that we won't reap the benefits of what God actually is intended for you to reap. It's very key that we understand this. So the fear of God is important as part of our life as Christians, to fear God. Remember I said... Uh, and, and someone gave me an example the other time, anyway, that you, you see even very big men uh, running in the train station only wanting to get to work at 9 o'clock or at 8.30 because that, that they started at that time. Why? Because they understand that I have to be there in time. So the fear of God will get, do, get us to do uh, even what people may say that ah, this is crazy or whatever it is the explanation they can give. But I think... Be called crazy by people, but pleasing God is still fine. It's still very fine. Because we, 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 I, I have come to understand certain things. Certain things I have come to understand is that, do you know what they say? There are some, some rules which are not made, which aren't written anyway. But um, we, 
We follow them because that's a general expectation. I'll give you an example. If I want to, if I want to eat breakfast at night time, who says it's not, it can happen? <laughs> but if I say I want to eat breakfast now, people say, this is the night time, why are you eating? So who say that? It's only food I want to eat. That's the kind of thing I want to eat at that time. So I'm, I'm just saying that there are certain, certain rules which just rule us because, uh, you know, it, it's just a general <laughs> understanding which we have. So, so anyway, so, but my, 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 my word to, uh, I'm just saying to you is that we need to understand as long as we do what is, what is right before God, that's what is important. Because at the end of the day, when you are asleep, when you don't know, even know what's happening, it is God who's looking after you. The many people will be saying different things. They won't be with you at that time, or they won't look after you at that time. But it is God who will look after you. So it's very important that we, we fear God. When we fear God, it means then we always do what he instructs us to be doing. That's what is very, very important. Now, so when we saw the, the, the consequences, then um, so Adam and Eve, they were not able then to... Uh, to, to, to to reply God, they were not able, they were, they were in trembling, they were not able now to communicate with God because they, it was cut off, the, the word became the truth to say that the time the, you eat, you're going to die. So they, were, they died in the sense that they were not able to communicate with God as they used to before. So, um, so that, that's, very, that's, that's very important. But what I want you to understand more than that, even, even, even much more important, is that they still lived the life. They still lived the life. They, 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 still, they still had children. That's what the Bible says. And in fact, that's where, that, that's our forefathers. That's where you came from anyway. But the issue is that we were now living in a cursed land. That, that's what, when you read the Bible, that's what you, it tells you. It became cursed and then, uh, you know, a, 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 a woman and, and a snake became enemies in that, in that sense. That, that's where it started from. But the issue is, it's all started by because we didn't, uh, someone did not fear God. So my point I am saying to you is that let us fear God. When we fear God, when we fear God, it means then we we'll always walk in his ways. Now, when we don't fear God, it means then we still live a life, it's fine. We still do whatever it is. It's fine. We still go to work. It's all fine. But the only thing is that we are just not living a life which God intended us to live. So it's your choice today to think about fearing God. When you fear God, it's the beginning of wisdom. You start to do what is right. It's very, very important. So when we look back at our theme the Bible says you may not be able to worship this God because these people, the Israelites, were actually worshiping other idols. They were having other idols. And again, they were also um, not pledging their loyalty to God. So here's the thing. We are now saying, so how can we be able to worship this God? Because Joshua said to them, you may not be able to worship this God. So, what kind of a person? How can you be able to worship this God? Because Joshua made a very frightening statement to say you may not be able to worship this God. It's a, it's a very a frightening statement that yes, you are pledging that you are going to worship this God, but you may not be able to worship this God. Why? Because he had understood that they had not placed their loyalty towards God. They were also... Um, yeah, they had not pledged their loyalty towards God, and also they were still worshiping the idols. So we were now saying that, so what kind of a person can be able to worship God? A person who fears God is one of the things. That's why I'm talking about fear today, fearing God. A person who fears God. Because definitely, if, if they feared God, they would abandon the other gods, because the Bible says, the Lord, your God, is, Lord is one. Worship God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength. So, that's what we are saying. Amen? Um, 
the fear of God. So the person who fears God will be able to understand that God and God only alone is the one who is worth to be worshipped. No matter you can go through a challenging situation, no matter what it is, but the fear of God should remain in you to know that God says this, I am going to do it. You don't have to be told by anyone. Remember, I gave you an example of someone who's rushing to work. No one is phoned him that morning to say, go to work, you need to come at 7.30. No. But they know very well <laughs> that their contract says 7.30. So they fear, they really have to rush to work. So when we fear God in that respect, in that sense, it means that even ourselves as well, we don't have to be reminded every day. We don't have to be told every day. We don't have to, um, to wait for someone to tell us. But we already know that we have to fear God. You see, I, I, think that's the, I really think that's the most important thing one should have, to fear God. Because on your own and uh, in your own house, you just do what is right. You know things to say, you know what things not, not to say, you know what to think to prioritize, you know things which are not to prioritize. Why? Because the fear of God is in you already. But when the fear of God is not in you, like I said before, you still live life. That's not a problem. But you are just living a life which displays that you don't fear God. That's all it is. In the case of Adam and Eve, they had to be moved away from the presence of God. Why? Because they had not feared God in that respect. My point to you is that you need to learn to fear God in your own life. You are the one who knows even on your own, even the, there's no one who will see you, you are the one who knows yourself in your, own, your life. But learn to fear God. I think that's the most important thing one can have. Because when we fear God, then it means that we rely on God. All the people who feared God, they, 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 they came across challenging situations, but they went through those situations, and God, in a way, helped them. When you look at the, the, um, the story of Job, when you look at the, the story of Jesus himself, when you look at the story of all men um, who, who were used by God in the Bible, when if you look at the disciples, many people, they really stuck to what God had said to them, no matter the outside environment, no matter what, they stick, stuck to what God says. So I think it's something which we would need to really value ourselves. So which means then you, you, you won't need anyone um, you know, to, to follow you up or, to, or to, you know, to force you to do anything. Why? Because you, you know already, you don't have need to be told by anyone because you know already, it's there in you already. Remember, think about this. You are the God's child, the one which is mentioned in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12, the one who says, for those who received him, he gave them the right to be called the children of God, but not born of flesh, human flesh, but born of God himself. So which means you become the son of God. So which means that if you see, things need to be done. You know, a son... A son will not um, wait to be told what needs to be done in the, um, in the field because you know that at the end of the day, it's our field anyway. We are going to eat the food anyway. Sometimes when we are going through um, a, a challenging situation or, or something which is, uh, which is difficult, we forget to see the... the um, forget to see the vision, forget to see the benefits of it. But I've always said, whatever the instruction God gives, always have a hidden benefit. Go from the place you are to the place I'm going to show you. Abraham became one of the richest people in the Bible. Isaac uh, do not go to any place but remain in the dry ground. 
so he saw, he was given instruction to sow, and as he saw, he harvested a hundredfold. But my point I'm saying is that all oh, these things are not easy. They're not easy. To remain in the dry ground, it's not easy. No, it's not easy. To move away from the place you are to where God is going to show you when you're 75 years, it's not, it's not easy. Or when you are around that age, it's not easy. You know, when God is telling you to do something, it's, it's just not easy. But what it is, is that most of the time it's got a hidden benefit, which you can't see with your own eyes, but God himself only see. So the fear of God, when we maintain the fear of God, it means that we are creating a certain benefit for us and our children um, when we are worshiping God in the way which God says. It's very important. Um, because we, are, we live in our own flesh, because we, we, because we are in this world, it's, um, we, we normally prioritize what the flesh wants because that, that's where the demands, demands are. But my point today is the fear of God. So it's something which I want you to think about in your life, to fear God. What is it to fear God? When you fear God, you do what he says in his scriptures. Before, you are told by anyone, but you have to go, you, 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 you do it yourself. You see, so when, um, when we do that, it means then that we are demonstrating to God that we really received his word and we believe in his word and we believe that he is actually the creator of heaven and earth and everything we can see. Let us continue to seek him, let us continue to, to fear him so that we can see the result, the, the, the reason why he's saying that do this, we'll see it, but it's hidden at the moment, but you'll see it one day when we follow what he is actually saying to us. So that's my word really to say, let us not entertain when the devil is coming. The Bible says the snake was the most cunning animal amongst the, the, what God created. So sometimes the devil may come in a way which is so much attractive and we think it's right. But as long as it is contrary to what God is saying, let us understand that we need to be watchful so that he, we are able to overcome, um, you know, the deception of the devil. So that's my way today, um, but really to fear God. The, to fear God, when we fear God. See, when we fear God, even today, when you really fear God, you understand that, you know, what God has said to me in the word, that's what I want to go and do. And you go and do it without anyone telling you, because you fear God. When God says something which is difficult to do, because you fear God, you go and do it. When you fear God, you are not intimidated by any situation. In fact, any situation will actually give us, um, will actually give us a motivation to do what God says. And we need to understand that it's not, it's not that we need to rely on ourselves, but we rely on God. The Apostle Paul says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So meaning that the weakness of Paul is the strength which God is going to give him. But we always rationalize it in the sense that I am weak, then I'm weak. Or that I am not able to do it, so I'm not able to do it. But let us rely on God. Let us go to do it for us. Let us, you see, come all who, those who are burdened. I'll give you my yoke, for my yoke is light. See, the yoke of God is light. So I'm encouraging you today that uh, let us fear, learn to fear God. You yourself to learn to fear God. That's what is very important. Because when you fear God, you know, God will start to understand that you rely on him. No matter what it is that happens, you rely on God. So you fear God, you, you, you say, because God, you've said it, I will do it. And do not let anything come in between your love and your God, the love 
um, and your God, your love and your God, um, and, and God. Nothing can separate us away from the love of God. So truly, nothing should separate you away from the love of God. Let us fear God. In fact, um, what we need to understand is that we need to fear God because he is the one who created heaven and earth. He is the one who gives us the breath we have today. He is the one who... So he is the overall uh, supreme being we need to fear. But most importantly, let us obey what he says in his scriptures. No matter it can be difficult. No matter it can be easy. But let us continue to try and abide by what the word of God teaches us to do. That's what is very, very important. That's what's very important. And let us seek to do what is right in his presence. Let us seek to, if the Bible says, for those who received him, he, be, he gave them the, uh, uh, the right to be called the children of God. Not born of men. So let, which means let us, let us move away from the, 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 the human limitation. But let us move to another level where we understand that we are the sons of God. We are, we are God's children. And whatever it is that uh, God says is important, and we try to do it. And I believe we then don't live a life full of fear, but we live a life of fear in God. May God bless you. Thank you very much for listening. So that's my word today, really, to say the fear of God is very, very important. Um, when we lose the fear of God, yes, we still live life, but then the language of God becomes foreign to us because... We, 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 we are not fearing God, so anything goes because we don't fear God. The language of God, when he says something, we, we, we don't understand his language. Why? Because we have demonstrated that we do not fear him. So let's go back to fear God, and that, I think, is the passport for so many things because God will never change. What he says stands, and when, when what he says stands, it means that he will fulfill the promise which you always say to us. So that's my word, really. And thank you very much for listening. Uh, join us ag again uh, next week where we continue to talk about the word of God and we continue to reveal the truth of God and so that we continue to walk in his ways. May God bless you. And thank you very much for listening. In the name of Jesus, amen.